what you can do with these contracts is you can embed into the code every single time my piece sells on the secondary market, you get 10% automatically. Um, and I think some websites allow you to set that and some restrict it. I haven't looked at every website that does it, but that's the huge benefit for anybody that is an artist. Welcome back everyone to Be The Trader. Today I have a very special guest and a special episode. First off, I'm bringing back Cody, AKA Odd Stock Trader, who is a successful day trader. And you can learn about his story because he's been on the show before, but today he's been really, really diving into, if you've been following on Twitter, he's been really into the NFT world. And I feel like he's fell in love with it. So I love, I wanted to bring him in because I listened to him talk at Traders for a Cause and it really made me more inspired to learn more about this. So today I got Cody, aka Oddstock Trader, maybe maybe Oddstock NFT or you know in the future. <laughs> so hey, welcome, my man. Welcome back. It's nice to see you again, Alex. Good to be on as well. Absolutely, brother. So I wanted to kick it off, you know, from someone who's not really into the NFT world at all. Just now, myself get into crypto and all of that. So I have so many questions. So yeah, for, for you. How is, can you explain NFT in a, in a quick, if you can, like if it can be explained, a quick nutshell for people who may not be aware of what it is? Uh, the, probably the easiest sentence, and it's like with Bitcoin, like my my explanation always changes the longer that you've been involved with this stuff. But like right now, it's, it's kind of like people have figured out the emergence of digital rarity because from a base perspective, that's really all Bitcoin did is it created the ability to not have a hackable database, which allows you to kind of build on those things. So you kind of got to think of it as um, when NFTs are created, you know, everything as far as, you know, where they came from, the address that they came from, uh, the timestamp, all that stuff, as far as if you look into the contracts, it, the best thing right now is like, say, you know, Topps makes baseball cards, but now just imagine every time yeah. Topps prints a baseball card, uh, there's like public data on that printing of every single time one comes out of the machine, but now it's all just electronic. Uh, so it's just all natively lives on the internet. And you know, what's crazy about that. Something you said during your conversation on Trader for a Cause, you said something that really stood out to me and that's these artists who may be, may be really well, like there may be really great artists and they just haven't had a way to really monetize their artwork, right? At the beginning, maybe they're just starting out but you mentioned something how if someone buys an NFT artwork and then there's transactions that happen after that, like the artist can actually can make a commission on that piece of art. And when you said that, I said, and this is my humble opinion, I don't freaking know what's going to happen, but I don't think they're going anywhere. I think, I think they're staying here. And I'm like, I got to learn more about this because that right there is the reason why I believe it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And it, it, it's not, I mean, as with anything, as far as like being a student of the market, anytime there's a massive interest and a massive influx of money, like NFTs had early in the year, uh, you know, it, to me, it was just kind of a signal that, all right, it, this thing is here to stay. Obviously, prices are going to not be so insane. But, you know, when I first figured out what an NFT was back in, you know, the crypto kitty days, because people were laughing at me for buying these things. And, and they're not, I, some of them are worth some money now, but it was more, for me about, okay, I, I had purchased this Ethereum stuff that I had no real idea what it was because I had heard of Bitcoin, you know, in 2016. And uh, I started to see these things on Twitter. Like it was just a random thing, kind of like how AMC squeezed today. It was just a random, like I saw a post and somebody was talking about crypto kitties or you read it in the news. So, you know, a couple hundred crypto kitties later when it was the, all the craze, you know, I started to say, you know, what am I actually buying? I, I under, like, I understand it, but I wanted to delve into it a little bit more during, you know, the brutal 2019 year and, and late 2018 year trading wise that I had. So I had a lot of time to learn about it, but as far as, you know, those early days, nobody knew what this stuff really was, but it was, it was just kind of the next evolution of what Bitcoin, you know, created as far as its base level layer uh, of the internet. Um, and I guess to, well, I'll go back to you, but like the way I, I view the internet is, is all layers. So, you know, you have TCP IP, which just connects computers together so they can talk to each other. 
Um, and then you have the internet. So you have all these applications that companies built on the internet. And then Bitcoin came along and it's just a decentralized, everybody's computer is all working together to solve one thing. Um, and so when people log on to like the internet just on their phone, they do it from a browser level. So there's different layers of like how the internet functions and how we interact with it. And to me, it was like Bitcoin kind of just went right on top of where, you know, TCP IP was where people were trying to figure out how to make money. So one layer above that, obviously Ethereum is kind of the same concept, but one layer above that, now you can create stuff on mm -hmm. these layers of the internet. And, and that's really what the NFT is, is just creations on another layer of the internet to me. And, and but for the people who are listening, and even I was scratching my head at first when I heard about this, I was like, okay, NFTs, NFTs is artwork, it's it's cards, it's all digital things, right? Everything's digital pretty much. Yep. And it's, it could be digital shoes, right? It could be- Which could also be, which could also get you real world shoes, so. Um, How, and, what do you mean by that? So when you buy these NFTs, so there's an interesting company that I watch as far as like the emerging one that, that's doing some of the coolest stuff and their name is RTFKT. So uh, like that's all there is like, at RTFKT Studios. So all they do is they make uh, some pretty amazing just technological stuff like Snapchat filters. But these NFTs, you can they, they offer them and then they start creating stuff off of these NFTs. So, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to your artist, why an artist would stay on this platform and <laughs> never leave it because that's a big, big part of it is, you know, with these shoes things, if I were to buy one of these and they did an auction for, if anybody has any history of Nike and Jeff Staple back in 1996, I think it was, maybe it was 2006. I don't know. Cause I'm not a big sneakerhead, but uh, just a brief backstory is he created 20 of these, you know, I think it was like air force one Nikes that had a little pigeon on the back and people went nuts for him. Um, I think Sotheby sold a recent pair for $46,000. Oh my God. For a pair of shoes. But he had <laughs> did a, a, a drop with this studio and it sold out within, you know, like a minute as far as people rushing in to buy it. It, it choked the uh, credit card transaction limit of Stripe at like 2,700 requests a minute or something like that or a second. But what they offered was if you are the, think of that NFT now as like a ticket and, and ticket sales will be the same thing. Um, if I hold that, it's very easy to for them to know based off of the blockchain, okay, if you are a, a token holder of this asset, all you have to do is, you know, go to their website that created, log into your MetaMask, and now you've connected as far as that layer again on the internet. Hmm. And then you enter in your address once the shoes are available and they ship them right to your house. So uh, as far as the artist point, because I want to answer that question, yeah. anybody can create one. So there's like Rarible. There's all these different websites where to me, it's like art has been a lost medium for, and I had to kind of study into art as to why am I doing this? Sure. Because art's been a lost medium for so long that nobody's cared. And then all of a sudden, like this picture in the background, when crypto kind of came along, I was like, what would be a cool thing to create in the real world because of this digital only thing that, you know, I can't touch it. So I had my brother paint a picture of Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and the basic attention token, which I was fond of. And, you know, to me, it was one of the early pieces of crypto art. You know, it was real world, but he made it for me late. Uh, I actually have a look at me. February of 2018. And he just started making NFTs as well, which is which is kind of cool. because I, I think he's very artistic. But what you can do with these contracts is you can embed into the code every single time my piece sells on the secondary market, you get 10% automatically. Um, and I think some websites allow you to set that and some restrict it. I haven't looked at every website that does it, but that's the huge benefit for anybody that is an artist is number one. Now you can put your art, you know, on the web in a much easier way, whether you just do real world stuff and you sell the NFT, then that person can redeem it. Yeah. Um, you know, so like there's one artist mm. that he was offering, it was, kind of in the craze where even I was going a little nuts buying these things for way more than I thought I ever would. Um, but he had an NFT that was like, if you purchase this, I will send you the real world painting. Uh, so that's what he did. And I wanted to test out that. I wanted to make sure, obviously, now this person does actually do art in the real world. And it's it's so 
different that, you know, I would never collect art, but the fact that I can hold all these assets just on a Ethereum wallet is, is amazing versus having, you know, 500 pieces of artwork all over my house if I appreciate somebody's artwork. Um, but how does it come and, to, if you don't mind, if yeah. you don't mind, I, I want to know, because there's probably people hearing this and they're like, well, like how is there value? Like, how do I, I, I mean, I buy a piece of artwork. How do I know it's the right thing to buy? How do I even, even sell it? You know, if I do sell it, and I get it. Like, I mean, you got to have a wallet. A lot of people don't know this. So, but if you could walk through that real quick, just because there's a lot of people who don't know that process yeah. because they might have hear you talk and they're like, you know what? I want to buy my first piece of NFT digital artwork. And I just don't know how to even start about that. How to do it. Yeah. And it's, it's slowly, it's getting easier to do that, but you know, the, the old process, I'll go over the old process of just how hard it was and why nobody was doing it. So first and foremost, you, number one, you had to sign up for a Coinbase account. There's one process. You had to be able to move your money into Coinbase. You had to know to buy Ethereum. You had to know, you had to then set up what is called a MetaMask or these yeah. other, you know, uh, basically they are wallets that integrate with browsers that allow you to interact with the blockchain. Then you had to move your money from Coinbase, your Ethereum, into that wallet, and then you could interact with the contracts that are on, you know, all these platforms. So you have like 15 steps, you know, and then you got to make sure you win it if it's a, like an auction. So you got to sit there forever. But now what you're able to do with some of these websites that I've seen popping up as far as like OpenSea and um, Bitski and their, I know NBA Top Shot was a big one, was that people don't want to do that stuff. It's too hard, but if anything NBA Top Shot showed me as far as people want this stuff, because I think I think from just a base level, they understand it in a way of like digital trading cards. I get it. It's yeah. rare. It's on the blockchain and okay, whatever. But what Top Shot did is you could sign up with an account, put your credit card in, and that was it. It was easy because <laughs> everybody has, a, almost every United States has a credit card or debit card, whatever. But it allowed you to just interact you know, and cut out seven steps. And now your assets are just on, in my opinion, on like Top Shot is kind of still centralized because if they just yank the website all of a sudden one day, there goes all yeah. your stuff. Um, granted, their blockchain, you can still see everything is, is live and public. So you still technically have assets, but you can't, the thing to me on all these things is I have to be able to move it at will whenever I want. So you know, something like people that have no idea is BitConnect. You had to a big fraud Ponzi scheme that happened in the crypto world. And in, in oh, I didn't know about this. And the the thing that caught my eye immediately was that you had to put your Bitcoin on their website, but you had to lock it there for like 90 days or 120 days. And you would get daily 1% interest on it. I'm like, that's a classic Ponzi scheme. <laughs> it was blatant. But when I buy stuff on like Bitski or Bitski is probably the best example right now. It's B-I-T-S-K-I where I can use a credit card. I can buy it and immediately it's in my Bitski wallet, but I can immediately move it to another Ethereum wallet. Like as long as I have Ethereum in that wallet to pay the, the gas fee. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been doing some interesting stuff with like uh, MLS, uh, the one of the MTV music, not MTV music awards. I think it's some other music awards thing they just did, uh, but they do some pretty interesting stuff. But as far as the art history, like you, you yeah. asked, you know, a lot of that stuff you have to like circle back and understand, okay, well, why yeah, is, sure. why does art have value anyways? Um, and the, I'm no, I'm no art history person, but my base understanding of art from all the movies and all the other stuff I've learned in my life is art has value because of recognition. Uh, like everybody knows what the Mona Lisa looks like. Everybody knows what a Picasso, well, everybody knows who Picasso was uh, in general. So, you know, it's when everybody knows something, that's just what creates value. Um, and there's a great scene if you YouTube it, I don't know, you would have to search, but on the original Wall Street movie, there's a scene that, you know, you can kind of learn from where Gordon Gecko points to a painting and says, I, I bought this for 60,000. I could sell it today for 600 because the illusion is now real that, you know, this, this thing has value because everybody's seen it. Everybody that comes into my office has seen it. Um, and so in a way art is just an illusion, illusionatory 
value that is created out of thin air, which I mean, a lot of stuff is because you build a house. It's not really yeah. out of thin air, but it's a kind of grasp that concept of art has value because of that. So from like the investment or the trading standpoint is find things that, you know, like if, if Pac-Man were to make their first NFT, do you think that's going to be worth something in 50 years? Probably. Probably. If, yeah. You know, and they just did Pac-Man came out with a, uh, they did a collaboration with a, um, I think it's called genies where you can create your own 3d avatar and clothe them. Um, kind of like how Roblox is now selling Gucci stuff. Um, but again, Roblox is all centralized. So yeah, it, it, it brings crazy. you back to like that as a, an artist, why would I want to necessarily do that and, and go through that where if I have the skills or a, a you know, a, a tablet, I can draw the stuff out, sell it. And if I want to make it in the real world, I can give it to the person that bought that. Cause the proof's always there. It's like a, a receipt that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> so, you, you know, and you mentioned about the process, how it was so difficult at the beginning. Cause it was like, that's why I avoided it myself. I was like, Oh my God, I got to put my money here. And then I got to do this. And then I got to do that. I was <laughs> yeah. like, this sounds like a scheme. I was like, they're just going to take my money. So, but now it's gotten a little bit easier, but I'm um, the gas fee you, you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain it as much as you know about in terms of the gas fee for people who are like, what, what's he talking about? What's a gas fee? Because when you make yeah. a transaction with Ethereum, there's something that's called a gas fee. Yeah. So every time, and I, I think it was like, it's not every 10 minutes, but Ethereum has blocks. So every time that there's a block, only so much data can be put into that block and stored. And then it goes on to the next one and then the next one. So if I were to say, well, I want this transaction to occur on the Ethereum network, like I want to buy this piece of art, you can set how much you want to pay in gas. But if you set it really low, your the the block that you're going to get is probably like three hours in the future based off of current usage. So like, and it wasn't even less than, gosh, probably a year ago where the Ethereum gas fees, like to get it done in the next block, like I want it done now was like 35 cents. <laughs> so it was usable. Whereas when everybody started, you know, finding about NFTs and you just had an influx of everybody, everybody wants their stuff in the next block you yep. know, because they want their transactions done. So or I guess a good example was when, you know, stuff was panicking, you know, last week. Yeah. Gas fees were $1,200 at one point to get your trade or your transaction in the next block to get it done. So that's kind of the nuances with like DeFi assets is that you have to understand <laughs> if there's going to be people competing to get into a limited, you know, resource as of now, as far as like the mining goes. But when they switch to proof of stake, that'll be interesting. I'll have to, you know, read up about more as far as how Ethereum is going to react to that. Uh, Cause all you're doing when you're paying these gas fees is, you know, like I said, is you're saying I want in the next block, here's the amount of money that, I'm giving the miners all that conglomerate of people with their graphics cards or ASIC chips, but I don't think ASIC is on uh, the Ethereum blockchain, but I want it done now. So I'm going to pay you $500 to get it done in the next 20 seconds yeah. or here's a dollar, do it in three weeks. I don't care. But you know, when you're, when you're trading DeFi assets versus like NFTs, you know, it's a big, big difference as far as that goes. Um, and why does it matter? Uh, so an example that I use was, I guess I'll use the one from the, the yeah. that I have in the background was the basic attention token when it did its ICO in, I think it was early 2017, you had to pay a gas, like there was gas fees involved. So the per, like they sold out with their ICO within 30 seconds, I think it was, but the, somebody paid $66,000 in a gas fee. So their transaction was first. So they would get all the tokens that they requested. And then it just kind of goes in a line of, you know, because the miners know which, you know, who's offering me the most to do this and then they do it. Um, and so like those gas fees are, they're, they're not going anywhere. Um, yeah. Proof of stake will probably change a whole lot. So I'll have to, have to change that, but uh, there's positives and negatives too. What'd you say is going to change it? You think proof of change? stake proof of so, stake. So it's like you own. So like, let's say like if I wanted to buy, I think it's always it has been since they announced it was you'd have to own 32 Ethereum to have your own node, which just think of like a node is just points on a network. Okay. I can explain it way more, but just think of it as now you have a point on the network that can verify transactions because 
if I was a bad actor and I had that 32 ETH and I said this transaction happened and it didn't, hmm. I would get my Ethereum slashed, which is like I would lose five and then I wouldn't have a node anymore because I was a bad actor on the network. So uh, anyways, I mean, I could go down that rabbit hole, but NFTs are, I guess, the topic people <laughs> want to hear about. So I, try, I always run down these paths, but... Um, Everything's so new though. Like, there's so many things that you're learning so much every day. I, I see you reading tons of books lately. It's 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 crazy. It's crazy. So it's probably why you're into sneakers too now, NFTs, because you just read that book about sneakers. And I'm just like that too. Yeah. Well, I, I like sneakers because you can wear them too. But you know, it, it's it's weird to me how much I've spent on sneakers in the last year. Like it's, but it was kind of the same thing. I was like. In 2018, I was like, why am I buying baseball cards all of a sudden? Like, why am I buying sports cards? Like, I, I didn't understand why I was doing it. I was just like, I felt this urge after Tiger Woods won the the Masters to be like, I want some Tiger Woods cards. Now I want some Griffey cards. Now I want some, like, I just started buying baseball cards until I was like, all right, I have enough. I need to stop. <laughs> so, so speaking of buying items, cards, NFTs, all of that, what would you say, is it more, because I know you've been buying a lot of NFTs, you've been in this world for a while, and yeah. since you've been buying, I know you have wins, you have losses, just like in anything, but what would you say you've learned, like, what's a winner, what's a loser, is there really, is it just a, like, just, hey, I, if you think, like, can you give us an idea of what your mindset is when you're looking at them? Because yeah. there's so many, right? There it's are digital. so many. There's so, thousands. In the, in the early days there weren't even that many websites. Like I think it was like super rare was one of the, and it's still, to me, it's like, it's like the, the, the pinnacle of like artists. Okay. We get on a website called super rare.co. Um, because if you look at some of the, the values there, they're pretty high. Um, there's also like foundation and other ones, but there's so many different websites now where back in the old day, there was only a couple. And so all I looked at was the same kind of things that I looked with for stocks was where's the volume going? What are, what are people buying right now? Even though it's really small, like who seems to be like somebody who has been doing this long enough, they, they aren't doing it for a cash grab. They're doing it because they love it. Um, you know, and so I found some, some other people, one of these guys that, you know, I bought one of his pieces for like under a hundred dollars. I don't want to give away like what, <laughs> what it was that I was buying and all that. But, um, you know, I just thought that this guy that was making these, was the Banksy of NFTs at the time. I'm like, this guy makes some cool stuff. He's like the first one doing it. Nobody's looking at this stuff. So I'm like, I'm gonna buy one of his things. So, you know, I randomly put it up for sale in, I think it was March, sold it for $45,000. I was like, this is ridiculous. Um, you know, so it's like, it's so I literally crazy. bought a digital <laughs> thing on the, the computer for, you know, less than a hundred bucks, sold it for a Tesla. So it's like, Wait, what? <laughs> how, uh, how long of a difference? I mean, what was the time frame that you I had? I think that? that time frame was a year and a half. No, I oh, bought it yeah. early twenty early 2019. That's crazy, so, though. Two years. And that's the way I treat a lot of this stuff is think of it as a long tail. If you're going to buy something, number one, I'm like, I buy just stuff that if I was a kid again, like what, what invokes those things? So like Star mm -hmm. Wars stuff. Um, stuff that I've, I've over time since I've been alive has kept its value or increased in value, you know, um, like Adidas type of like any of those big brand names that nobody's looking at these things. I'm like, and it's not a, a crazy price. I'm like, I'll buy that. And then I just treat it like I bought a pair of shoes, you know, like it's just going to sit there. They're not going to pay me anything unless, you know, all of a sudden something happens. So like a good example would be, you know, like, I'm not going to say this in a, a me way, but it'd be like, imagine with the Rob Gronkowski NFTs, like imagine um, Kobe Bryant had NFTs, you know, before he passed away, like yeah. when he passed away, I'm sure all those NFTs, if he had created them, the values would have skyrocketed just like all his sports cards. So same kind of concept is like, you have the ability to now literally direct to directly invest in people. Um, mm, versus okay. companies like if i like my brother's work i can just keep buying it so now you know there's one guy that i saw that was just like his art just kind of was like oh this is cool i looked up his his social media stuff and this is like my due diligence process i'm like all right does he's got some followers all right i'm gonna google him now because yep. i'm just curious i want to see if he's real and not some because i don't want to make sure he's not like an ar bot because i'm sure those are going to pop up where it's like just a an AR 
bot is creating these things, which also could have value in the future if you're buying an AI, you know, thing. And then it comes out, oh yeah, this was an AI that could be worth way more, but you never know. So I go through like a social media account. I'm like, this guy's real. He's actually been doing art for a long time. I'm going to buy one of those things. And then I want to buy another one. Just now I feel like I'm directly investing in this person. Not that I expect any return from them. It's just watching what happened to this person after I started spending too much money. Um, was they literally changed, like they became so popular, like changed their life. Like that person quit their job. Uh, wow. They had recently just sold an NFT f- for a hundred grand. So it's like this person's life changed. And that, to me, it's like, I was just kind of like, really like liking this person's stuff. Yeah. And now, you know, I, I, I don't say that I changed their life, but I have that feeling of like, I made a difference in somebody's struggling artist's life. That's cool. It's kind of cool. To me, I don't know. <laughs> I like what you said about you're kind of investing in. We have an opportunity to invest in people in a way, and yeah. I think it's directly that yeah. that that just hit me so good because now I have two reasons why I'm going to be buying. Like you them. could make an NFT, and I could buy it for five hundred. Like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll make it bucks. tomorrow. <laughs> and it's like, and, and I think that's why I think that's why also. And then you have to understand like market dynamics. I think that's one of the big reasons why Ethereum just tanked is was. For any creator, like if I interest my brother in this and he goes on and signs up for like Rarible and he wants to make an NFT and it costs $600 to mint them, which is create them. He's like, well, this is stupid. Like, why would I do this? Um, so I think money goes to the people that persist and they and they pay attention versus people that bounce. Whereas they look at it and they're like, oh, this is stupid. $600. I'm never going to do this. Um, but it's it's literally direct investing in people. Um, and it's, it's, that's a very new concept. I know it's yeah. been tried on the internet before with different websites that have tried to get you to invest in like brand new sports players, but it never worked. I think this is literally the technology that will allow that to work. Um, and like, even if things are great for somebody's career and then all of a sudden they, they get destroyed, you know, these things are going to still exist. And it just creates a whole new dynamic of weird, different value. That, it's like, that can, now can you imagine if Michael Jackson made an NFT glove and he sold it and all of a sudden he passed away? That glove would be worth yeah. dumb money. You know, he'd just be dumb. Just like the real world item. like Exactly. But he could have been like, I'm going to make a special one of one that goes on the internet and a real world one. Like the values would still be the same. It would be just so much easier to transact the digital one because nobody needs to verify it because it's easily verified on the internet. Whereas, you know, somebody could recreate a, a, a well, diamond glove. Speaking of verifying though, like if, if I buy from, let's say I, I see you, right? You're, you're an artist, Cody. And I'm like, Oh, I like this guy's art. I'm going to buy that piece of artwork behind you. Let's just say you made, it. I know your brother made it, but let's just say it was hey, your, your username. I'd be like, you know what? How do I know that you actually made that? You know so what I'm saying? Part- Rather than you selling it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's a part of like the due diligence process. Like I'm, I have a, I literally have like a picture idea in mind that I think will be kind of cool that I'm going to actually make an NFT of. Um, Cause I think I could maybe get Elon Musk to retweet it because the, the picture idea is kind of interesting, but I would literally create it from my blockchain account. I would post the link to that. And now that everybody says, well, that's, I know that's Cody. I know that he just directed everybody to this Ethereum wallet. This is obviously his because it's the first one you can see it. You can literally see like the transactions minted on the blockchain as far as the standard for most of these NFTs is called ERC 721. So if I say, I, if I post something on Twitter all of a sudden, which is what I'll do, I'm like, this NFT is for sale. You click the link, it redirects you to whichever service I created on. But you can create these assets on any service. But if you create it on the blockchain of Ethereum or you know a very well-known blockchain, everybody can see, okay, Cody minted it two days ago. And here's his Ethereum address. So I'm going to create a new Ethereum address just to do that. But the proof is where my tweet comes from as far as I made this. And they can so tell that that address is linked to Cody. Yeah. And okay. you'll know that now because if I say, here's my NFT I just made, I'm literally also saying, here's my Ethereum address that I just made this off of. Hmm. Okay. Um, 
So like, that's where like the due diligence goes in as far as finding these artists going, taking steps back to like Googling them, looking at their Instagram, looking at their, their Twitter and, 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 you know, being, yeah, this person is this actual artist. Here's some historic data as far as this person, you know, in the news, that type of stuff. Um, and so it's a different type of due diligence, but it, to me right now, I treat a lot of this stuff as money gone, but yeah. I, I have a feeling that it's really not because of what it is still how early it is because of the same conversation we just had. It's just now company enabling credit card access. It's just now what you broke up. Hold on. My mm, thing just changed. There we go. So they're like some of these websites are just now enabling credit card access, which makes it that much easier. So I texted one of my friends uh, because Bitski was doing one of these sales. It was Adidas, number one, I'm like well-known company. It redirects right to their, their Twitter. Their Twitter also posted that they're doing this. So I'm like, this is actually Adidas. Like, I don't think that the verified Adidas account has not been, you know, it's not fraudulent. So the fact that they tweeted it at the same time, links me back to the direct page. So, and it was an NFT of the, I don't even know his name, but the first, uh, the number one NFL draft player this year. So okay. it was his like token that he, they sold. It was like open for like 15 minutes. You could get as many as you want. As soon as it was over, it closed. Done. Cause that's how they set up their contract was that it'll be an open auction for 15 minutes. You, they, people can buy as many as they want. And I think only like 333 sold or something like that, but they're already reselling on these uh, open C, which is a, think of it like the eBay for NFTs, uh, which is what I've said for years. But now every, I, now I hear like other people in podcasts saying, it, I'm like, it's weird, <laughs> but <laughs> oh my God, I feel like my, my thought is being stolen from like three years ago, but you can list these things on these different websites and they're already selling for like seven times what I already paid for them. Dude, uh, this is amazing. So to me, it's now it's not really at the uh, monetary thing. It's like I want to kind of collect this stuff because I think it might be worth money in fifteen years. You know, it reminds it's me like of a deep investment in yeah. my mind. Not I, like I don't trade this stuff. Like I buy it to literally hold it, unless somebody offers me an insane amount of money. Uh, you know, like if somebody's gonna pay me forty five grand for something I paid a you know less than hundred bucks for, <laughs> like all right, I'll take that. <laughs> but you know, just watch. And I bet you that same thing will sell for a quarter of a million dollars in five years. Who knows? I, I, I don't and know. And I'm going to sell it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, on, your microphone went out now. Hold on. Uh, there we go. I changed Okay. It. Now you're fine. So I, I wanted to ask you a couple of things because you said, uh, well, first off, all of that reminds me of one of my, my brother-in-law. He, he buys old school clothes cool nikes all kind, he collects all types of cards and he'll flip them and he yeah. loves doing that and like this is just showing me this is literally what we could do now without leaving your house you know like it's yeah. it's like crazy it's literally how much access you have for everybody now like it's yeah it's trading for everyone like whatever like you're interested in it's like a way more personalized version of like amazon but amazon is now everybody because you and this is like the, this is like this is why bitcoin is worth so much is because the power of decentralized decentralization is is just from a base level idea is unbelievable uh as, and that's why one bitcoin is worth almost forty thousand dollars you know that's why it's gone from you know those early days when i first saw it at 11 cents not buying it <laughs> but you know that's why it's worth so much is people just kind of understand number one you know, like a lot of people argue about the electricity cost. I'm like, okay, I, that's understandable. But what's the value of a database that has never been hacked when you see all you see in the news is people getting hacked, you know? So what sort of security, you know, systems are going to be created off of blockchain that, that haven't even been thought up yet? Uh, so that's, a, that's another interesting thing where you know, they say Uber doesn't have any cars, but, you know, Uber may not even ever have a building. <laughs> you know, everything will just be all done automatically online, seamlessly through smart contracts where, you know, if I, and this is one of the cool things that I saw, I'm going to go back. Smart to contracts. It. What's that? It's basically, you know, it's a, it's a long tail version. Just imagine an ex 
executable contract when two parties just agree on something over the internet. So if you list something for Ethereum in Nigeria or wherever you are, and I see it on the internet and I say, I want that, I'm going to interact with that contract, send the 2 point, you know, 0.25 Ethereum. I now have the asset. You have the money. Nobody is, there's no middleman. The middlemen are the miners, but that's what makes the network run. Um, so yeah, there was, there's a thought there that I had before that, but. Uh, yeah, and no, I just ruined it. I feel terrible. Yeah, but but uh, you, right. did, you did also mention this though. You mentioned uh, nonchalantly through the conversation of minted, like, and that's the process of being able to like, make stuff. Is creating. that like, is creating? It's just, it's just, it's just the, the term used for creating an NFT is minting them. Every time you do something, you got to mint them? Or is it just like when an you account? create one, yes. So okay. if I were to, you know, so like my brother's, he does art, but I bought him a, cause I, I was like, you need to do this. You need to at least try this. So I, I literally bought him a tablet that he could draw on, on Amazon and I shipped it to his house. I'm like, just like, here's a thousand dollar tablet. Just draw me something. I don't care. So, you know, he went to post it and it was like 600 bucks for a minting fee. I'm like, just wait like a week until it like drops below, you know, like 40 bucks, whatever. But, you know, that's kind of the cool thing is now I can directly invest in my brother and I can buy his work without that's awesome wasting space in my house buying his eight foot painting that you know i'm like where are we gonna hang this um but yeah it's, but you know but, you also said something about the the gas fee how you can set it back you can be you can wait in line well does that affect if you wait yeah. and you're trying to buy something now yep it, you miss so, out right is that like part of like the supply and demand of that whole yep okay so okay. if there is and i haven't seen it uh, other than the ico days where if so let's say you offer something but with a lot of these websites they have timers where if i, I put in a bid and i outbid you it resets the timer mm -hmm. which allows for different transactions in different blocks but if it was just a, like a countdown timer and you and i both submit you know a high bid and it's the exact same amount but if i put in more as far as what i want to pay the miner and gas feeds my transaction is going to go through yours is going to fail and get rejected mm. so like it, it hasn't happened because of how they've set up like these auction things. Um, and if it's an open contract for a time, it doesn't really matter, but you'd still want to make sure that your transaction gets mined before the clock runs out. And what does that mean? It means like if, if their, if their timer says there's 10 minutes left in the auction, it's like an open auction where I can buy an item. I can submit the transaction, but if I set my gas fee so low, that that block won't get mined as far as my transaction for three hours, I'm not going to get it and it's going to reject and it's going to send me back my Ethereum and I won't get the item. So, um, so it does, it does affect it in some way. Well, they, I think they, most of these websites that are starting to do credit cards have auto put in a gas fee that's going to make sure that you get it. Um, when you say credit card, they're just like syncing it up quickly and they could buy Ethereum right there and there. Is that what you mean? Because you still uh, got to go through some, Ethereum, no? Some of some of these, yeah. So the one that I saw today, I even posted it on Twitter. Uh, I think it was. Or is it their own own coin? Or like, you know what I'm saying? I can't remember who it was. But there, there was one website that I just added being able to add uh, with a Visa card. But like Bitsky, I, I think they're right now ahead of the game as far as the credit card interaction goes. Uh, and I'll use the example. I think this is what I was going to mention earlier. So I had my my friend try and buy one of those Adidas NFTs. And I was like, all I did was send him the link. And I said, try and buy one of these. That's it. He didn't know how to interact with Ethereum. Sends me a screenshot one minute later and he was able to buy it. Because all he had to do was put in his email address, his name, his credit card information, and it allowed him to automatically purchase the asset. But I would never have recommended this to him if I didn't know the website interacted with ethereum and i could move assets off of their platform immediately after i bought it so mm, gotcha. to me i'm like this is a safe thing to buy because it's not siloed on their website i can move it off into cold storage into another ethereum address so not a lot of websites have that ability at the moment to buy with a credit card not interact with ethereum but also move it to another ethereum address which is like I would say months ahead of some of these websites, but they're, they're, some are slowly catching on. You know, I, I want to ask you one last thing before we wrap this up, Cody, because you've been very helpful and it's already got me even more pumped. <laughs> like I'm super excited. Cause I'm like a big, like Marvel fan and anime. I'm be like, Oh, I'm going to get on this. Like I know it's going to happen. So I, I'm very curious. Um, what would you say 
if let's say let's say your let's say your brother, right? Before you started to get them on this train of NFTs, let's say you know he wasn't doing anything and he wasn't an artist, but he was just like, hey, I'm, I want to get into NFTs. What piece of advice would you give him if he's going to be like, hey, Cody, I'm going to start buying. What should I do? Any piece of advice before we wrap this up? I would say if you are going to jump into it as far as an artist point of view, do it with you know a heart intent as far as don't do it for the money, do it because you enjoy doing it. So if you, if you like sketching stuff or creating 3D items, uh, like if you're, if you're anybody in the creative field, don't do it for the money. The money will, will come at once. So like I didn't get into, I got into trading to make money, but a lot of it all came at once. Um, obviously there's probably a lot of reasons for that, but the NFT world's kind of the same thing is I think once you, I saw somebody, and this is a great example where I bought one of his, his, one of his first NFTs without you know, telling him, you know, I just interact with the contract and bought it, but he created like these cool 3d things. And I did my due diligence on him and, and found it. It, it. He builds stuff from the heart and he creates authentic new stuff. Like, you know, who knows where that's going to lead, but I could see that he did it from the heart and not making to make money. Um, and you, I've already seen a lot of these things where it looks like a, just a cash grab from people. It's stupid things with open. It's like there's open contracts and there's closed contracts. So like, I think if you're a, an artist, go the one of one route, like offer one thing for sale and that's it. It's the only one. Mm. And then do your next one. And then your next one. Whereas if you make one thing and sell it, you know, a hundred editions of it, you need to be ultra popular in order to to do that type of thing so like if, if i if i listed this picture as an nft and i wasn't popular i would do it as a one of one but if i was you know elon musk i'd sell it as a you know mm, that makes one of 100 because i know i could sell them but from the creator point of view um what about for the heartache. collector who knows if you're going to be the first garfield nft comic book creator you know like you do, you just don't know. Like the first NFT I could have bought for this guy, he could go on to, you know, do so well that he now makes a, a fully animated movie. And I own one of those characters that he animated five years ago, you know, and people will know based off of the movie and the blockchain that dude, this guy owns this thing and I want it. I'm going to give him money because I want to, I, it means more to me. So yeah. That's awesome, man. There's a That's lot of crazy. stuff you can go into. <laughs> well, look, Cody, look, if you can uh, tell everyone where they can learn more about you, because I know you post so much about this stuff, which is, I love it because I'm always reading. I'm like, this guy, I was like, he's always getting something new. I was like, I need to bring him on the show because I'm always. telling you, dude, it's, it's awesome to follow you. It's awesome to just, just see what you drop down on your Twitter, on your Instagram. So where can they find you if they want to connect with you? Yeah, uh, I think my most active thing is just on Twitter at Odd Stock Trader. I also do have a YouTube, which is, odd stock trader as well um but those are pretty much the two main spots um so yeah and funny funny story the uh boba fett helmet you have in the background my brother just did an nft of of a picture of one of those oh <laughs> so, did he really it just, like it literally just caught my eye I'm like I, that was literally something i just bought from my brother that he made so, <laughs> that's awesome man um well look let's connect again later and thank you so much my man have a great day yeah you as well this is great <laughs>